Tony, they didn't shout a vulgarity. It wasn't a racial slur. It was stupid and mean and dumb. And they at least should have been kicked out. But people need to be able to learn from their lessons. And I hope these people have, but the Blackhawks did the right thing. That was our Michael Wilbon. He's not holding back, reacting to the Blackhawks, of course, banning four fans from their home games after they directed racist taunts toward Capitals for Devontae smith Pelly. Stephen A., you agree with Wilbon? I agree with Wilbon. I think that he has a point because I think that he's going uh, by literally what was being said. The fact that they were chanting basketball, 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 that's not a racist taunt or anything like that. You can imply uh, what you imply, and there's no question about that. But the reality is, is that there's plausible deniability on the part of the fan uh, by saying such a thing. Basketball, basketball, basketball. They should have been ejected. The Blackhawks uh, handled it, uh, you know, nicely and appropriately as far as I'm concerned. And I had no problem with what uh, Mike Wilbon is saying. I wish he had more time because PTI is only a half-hour show. We know they understand it at ESPN, and they're only a half-hour our show uh, but the bottom line is is that I wish he had had more time like we have uh, to pontificate about this further uh, let's take into account what happened uh, last night with PK Subban um, and you know in Boston and what was transpired you say you know after a victory was scored in overtime or double overtime whenever it was uh, you had people chanting at you know going on Twitter rather and saying you know they they wish he got kicked out of the sport you know hashtag whites only and called them an effing n-word and all of this other stuff some people are more overt with what they're trying to say and others are a bit more subtle so what happened in chicago uh with pelly was of the subtle variety compared to what happened um in the aftermath of what took place in boston last night well, no matter what way you slice it there's reason and there's validity to people who point to these things and say, look at what the hell is going on. It's a problem. But Mike Wilbon was addressing the literal words that came out of these folks' mouths as fans. And from a literal perspective, chanting basketball, basketball, basketball to a hockey player, we get the inference, we get what's being implied, but what was actually said is an entirely different matter, and that's what we have to take into account. I think Will Bond, being the adult that he is, the accomplished columnist that he is, recognized the difference, and that's what he was pointing out, and I didn't have a problem with it. I agree with what Will Bond said as well, but um, I, I, I have a different analysis than you, sure. Stephen A. Sure. Uh, I, I don't think that you can infer any, I don't think there's any plausible deniability here. In other words, you don't have to cuss, you don't have to curse, you don't have to you know, swear, whatever you want to call it, in order to say something that is disqualifying in a public space, particularly if that public space is a sporting event, which is not a completely a public space, you pay to get in, etc. cetera. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that there needs to be something, one of the verboten words, in order to disqualify you from, that, from, from attendance. Mm -hmm. I think that you can construct meaning using words that are perfectly okay, but in combination with one another, you know, obviously get a point across that um, that the, the Chicago Blackhawks or any other organization or the NHL or polite society generally says, you know what, that's not okay. It's not okay. Like you have to tell a child, that's not okay. That's not part of our civil discourse. Even as we know, rooting in the stands can stir up passions and you can start to say things to try to get under <laughs> the proverbial skin of the opposing player and, and not really care how you do it and not even really mean what you say. It's just that you think it will bother the opposing player because you're trying to help your team winning a, win a sporting event or you're trying to emote in some way that gets to the to the uh, truth of what you're feeling in the moment, either competitive or you're feeling angry at the other team or whatever. So I, I think that is a gray area, the way fans' passions kind of, they leave their senses because their passions get them riled up. And even if they say something that, that, that is racist, they may not themselves actually feel that way. They're trying to get a reaction out of someone. Um, I don't think there's plausible not deniability, by you, the way, though, in terms of the inference. It, Max, it can only mean one thing. Basketball, basketball, you're chanting at a black Max, player. Max, do you hear Molly? You, why we would know you, you hear say. Molly? I will agree with Will Bond about this. I, do you, you know, hear if us? If you say, for example, lifetime ban or some unnecessarily long ban, unreasonably long ban, what you're doing is not allowing for personal growth for the offending party. The point of punishment is not simply deterrence. Hopefully it's a, it can be a learning moment, a teaching moment. So that remove them from the game, yes. 
ban them for some period of time, and then hopefully they've learned from their behavior Do and from the consequences us? of their behavior to correct that behavior. Uh, you, you can't really change people's hearts, but at least you can modify the behavior. And in that sense, I agree. You don't want to punish out of proportion. You don't want the punishment merely to be to placate angry, you know, angry reactions. You want it to actually do something constructive. So removing them from the game is correct, and some ban of some length of time is also a good idea, but we shouldn't go overboard. About that, I agree.